Hi, welcome to Amiga Alive. This is our Amiga 500. It works fine, except for the keys 1, Q, A and Y. Note that these keys form a diagonal line on the keyboard. So there's probably something wrong with the keyboard membrane. These are the tools we're gonna use. A screwdriver to open up the Amiga's casing. A small cross-tip screwdriver to disassemble the keyboard. A sharp knife or cutter. A piece of aluminium foil or maybe a short piece of wire. Conductive varnish, which is varnish that contains metal particles. A little bit of sticky tape. And a pair of tweezers may come in handy. First of all, let's remove the Amiga 500's top casing. To do so, turn it upside down and remove the screws holding it. There's the keyboard connection cable. Unplug it from the mainboard. This is always a good thing to do and first to check, because un- and later re-plugging it onto the mainboard connector cleans the pins and sockets a bit, removing possible corrosion. Now you can remove the keyboard from the Amiga. To further disassemble it, turn it upside down and remove a lot of small screws. Note the different types of screws for later reassembly. The longer ones go through the circuit board. The one with the bigger head has contact to some pads on the circuit board. Also note that three screws hold the insulation foil and the one with the big head is covered by it. Now you can separate the plastic keys from the keyboard's metal base plate. When doing so, make sure you don't lose the caps lock keys parts there's no glue or screws or the likes, they fall out easily. As you can see, each individual key corresponds to a pair of black contact pads with conductive paths attached. We open the keyboard membrane's connector by pulling its frame towards the membrane, give the connection a little movement in order to clean it from possible corrosion and push it back into place. This shouldn't be done too often, as the conductive paths on the membrane are very thin and may get damaged, resulting in even more keys failing. Now we take a closer look at the keyboard membrane. Reconnect the keyboard to the Amiga's mainboard and set it up in a way so you can access the keyboard membrane and whatever you need to run some program. Make sure the keyboard circuit board doesn't make contact with metal or electrical parts. Start up your Amiga and run some program that allows you to check keyboard input. We're using a shell window. Let's take a look at the black contact pads and the conductive paths between them. When a key is pressed down, it connects two of the pads and the paths attached, indicating a key press to the circuit board. We can trigger a key press by pressing a piece of aluminium foil on a pair of pads. This is the key 9, for example. By looking at the keyboard's keys and the membrane, you can locate each individual key. This is the backspace key, for example. As expected, when putting our aluminium foil onto the pads for the key 9, the symbol 9 appears in our shell window. With this Amiga 500 machine, we already know that the keys 1, Q, A and Y don't work. On this keyboard membrane, some repair job has already been done between the keys Y and X. Some conductive varnish has been painted onto the track. This is what we are going to do too, to fix the remaining non-working keys. Let's take a closer look. Here's a close-up of the area. In the center of the picture, you can see the pair of contact pads that corresponds to the X key. Conductive varnish has been painted onto the path to the pads near the upper right corner of the picture. These correspond to the C key. As you can see, keys share conductive paths, and these are mostly arranged forming lines of keys on the keyboard. That's why a line of non-working keys points to a broken path on the keyboard's membrane. 
Now we have to find the conductive path that's shared by the 1, Q, A and Y keys and the point where it's broken. We know that the X and C keys work and as you can see there is a path from the lower pad of the X key to the lower pad of the non-working Y key, but it ends there. So this is not the one that's shared with the other non-working keys. Additionally it looks a bit dirty but not broken. But there is a suspicious dark spot on one of the other conductive paths. We can trace that path to the upper pad of the non-working Y key. And as it turns out, it leads further up the membrane, first to the A, then the Q and 1 keys. There's a good chance this little dark spot is the source of malfunction of these keys. The keyboard membrane is made of two layers of foil. The lower layer carries the conductive paths. The upper layer covers them and has cutouts for the key contact pads. So we pick our cutter and carefully cut through the upper layer of foil on both sides of the conductive path. Using the cutter or a pair of tweezers, we can now remove the tiny part of foil that covers the path. We cover the area around the newly made cutout with sticky tape. The edges of the sticky tape should align with the edges of the conductive path as good as possible. Shake your conductive varnish well right before use, because the metal particles in it will sink down pretty quickly. We paint the path with a drop of conductive varnish and let it dry for a few minutes. Remove the pieces of sticky tape that you've used as a guide and put a new one on, covering the area for protection. Make sure it does not cover any of the key contact pads. And that's basically it. Now we can test the 1, Q, A and Y keys with our piece of aluminium foil. If they work, we can reassemble our Amiga 500. Switch it off again before doing so. Remember the different types of screws used for the keyboard? The one with the big head goes where the pads on the circuit board are and it's the one covered by the insulation foil. Be careful with the small keyboard screws. Tighten them very gently. Don't forget to reconnect the keyboard to the mainboard before putting the Amiga's top casing back in place. Finally, we start up our Amiga 500 again for a final check. And we are happy to see that all the keys work now. Nice. This was Amiga Alive. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.